A lot of y'all have been asking about this guy right here. Some people have even been skeptical because you haven't really heard an update from him. I'm not really looking at the camera thing. It's that green dot right there. Okay. Uh, anyway, here he is and he's been doing okay. He and I both um, enjoyed the holidays and I think you all know what we mean by that. But we, we, didn't, um, we didn't need any medical care. <laughs> or anything. We didn't go to that level, but we weren't really exactly clean. Um, and we definitely had some sugar and all that, but you all already know that because I've been, I've been updating you about myself and I am upfront. All right. So here he is with, um, a little accountability for that, but then also some new thinking. He's been delving into some more information about this. Um, okay. So you keep saying like you have kept saying, I don't know about this. This is weird. This seems weird. So why? Because it, because I don't really, I have not felt that yet, honestly. Uh-huh. My stomach is, has been all upside down and people here probably talk about these things, but your poop gets, it's not the same. Um, and I didn't feel good and it's weird to eat one meal a day and I want other things I want to stop by Tom Thumb <laughs> and pick up some yeah. vanilla Swiss almond ice cream yeah <clears throat> you yeah. know uh I'd like to eat a bag of Oreos. Yeah. Well, you know, they're vegan. I hear it, yeah. <laughs> so they must be healthy, right? I mean, so, I mean, those are, I know, old habits, and I'm familiar enough with fasting to recognize that, you know, those are, those are just addictions, really, sugar, like that. But to not eat some of my favorite foods. I mean, I love broccoli and I love garbanzo beans and I love spiced food from different cultures. And I like tacos and I like chips and, I mean, I like food. I like sweet potatoes. I like yams and I like I like mashed potatoes and I like gravy and I like okay. food. Sorry, I'm sorry. A lot like, of people watching this are not eating that stuff anymore, so we want to be kind I'm to them. I'm not eating it anymore either. <laughs> I'm, I miss it. Okay. My point is, yeah. you asked me, I'm yeah, telling you. Sure. <laughs> yeah, so it's not been comfortable, but. I knew that I had to do it again because October was really a positive experience. How so? Because uh, I did it for 30 days. I, I was uncomfortable the first week to 10 days. I did a three day fast where I just uh, drank water and what two of those nights I had beef broth with ghee. You know, just a cup at night of beef broth with with ghee and I woke up that like day 10 of doing that and I felt a huge amount of energy I just felt so good and that's where I resolved to eat one meal a day or only when I was hungry and it turned out to be one meal a day so with my work patterns and what I'm what I have to do physically uh, I'm going I'm about to go to Samurai in tea in Frisco check them out they're awesome Sebastian and, and everyone there uh, with the demands that I have physically I can't um, I have to pay attention to what's in my stomach mm -hmm. I can't have I can't have a lot of heaviness in my stomach um, so I ate a late an early a late lunch 
and intend to go do, you know. You were talking about October. Yeah, sorry for keeping, you, thanks for okay. keeping me on yeah. track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, October, so October was ultimately a very good experience. A uh, lot of energy, my sense, I, I, I s did sleep better. You said I didn't snore. Correct. Um, uh, I began regaining my sense of smell, which after COVID, it was having problems before COVID, but after COVID, man, 10% of my usual sniffer. So I have to, uh, I'd like to get that back. I've tried many different modalities to get that back. Uh, I did 12 weeks of prednisone through a doctor who's supposed to be amazing here in Dallas. Pfft, nothing. I did uh, six, I did lots of neti pots and I did, um, I did naturopathic and homeopathic for six months, different remedies. And I did acupuncture for six months. And, uh, you know, people say that they try everything and they tried one thing. Right. Oh, it doesn't work. I tried everything. <laughs> yeah. One thing. Well, fasting is a globally uh, uh, recognized method for addressing illness. Every culture. Mm -hmm. Often connected with, with spiritual practices. And I've been learning through various uh, researchers like Dr. Chris Palmer, Andrew Huberman, and, and other people about neurological benefits of fasting, the actual physiology. Some of y'all might remember that Dr. Barry, I think has an interview with Chris Palmer and he wrote that book called Brain Energy. So mm -hmm. go to Dr. Barry's channel and search for Chris Palmer and I think you'll come across that. Okay, and, and a lot of you know who Andrew so, Huberman is. So Chris Palmer was, he just blew my mind. And I listened to, I listened to that uh, just recently. Is that the Jordan Peterson, Chris yep, Palmer? That's, that, yeah. I mean, just that one I listened uh -huh. to twice. And to hear of how the research has moved well beyond anecdote, anecdote into, into, you know, long recognized research, but that it's typically connected with obesity or it's connected with um, uh, isolated areas, but that Chris Palmer has done us all a service and taken, recognized this research from various uh, areas of, of science and put them together. So the research is already done. That was mind blowing to see what they were able to observe, not with only fasting, but with ketogenic diets. And further how with a, a carnivorous diet, a, a lion's diet, how that supplies sufficient nutrients that you, he said, you trick your body into thinking that it is fasting. Mm. And so the, those discomforts happen and I hit my I guess my 10 day, no sugar, no other foods, you know, uh, border yesterday, I drank my beef broth with ghee and I feel really good. Wow. And my sense of smell, it wasn't returned, uh -huh. but I could, it's very interesting, it's delightful to smell, to have scent in its range. Mm -hmm. Just even, even if it's not full expression of scent, if you can find that, oh wow, I can smell different, I can smell scented candle. 
I can smell coffee. I can smell oranges. I can smell whatever. I, We're not eating oranges. No, but it, I can smell <laughs> as things. But they, have any in they exist, and sometimes yeah. he is in I the presence of them. <laughs> People will comment on this. Really? You'll be surprised. Really? Like one time, that apple that you brought back from a relative's yard in Minnesota was sitting back on that basket, and I recorded a video sitting here at this table, and somebody said, Hey, is that fruit back there that I see? And I'm like, food you guys, police. You guys. No food police. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but so no. if, if I didn't say we're not eating oranges, somebody would say, well, wait a minute, you're not carnivore if you're eating oranges. Then anyway, we, we would have that uh, going on. Okay, so what did you eat today? So I woke up, I had nothing. I had the elements with um, some half and half and uh, water and heated that up and that was really good. I am going to make my own mushroom uh, mix substitute for coffee. I'm going to do that, but not today. Uh, what did I eat? I asked him to just stick with animal-based, but he's being obstreperous, so I'll keep you guys updated. Yeah. <laughs> Will comment mushrooms are carnivore, so I'm getting ahead of that. We've had the conversation, people. Food, please. Yes, that's right. We've had the conversation. Don't worry, we're managing it here. I will let you know. Yeah, okay. So today, yeah, I had four eggs, I had a steak, I had four strips of bacon. I had some breakfast sausage. I had um, one short rib, a beef yep. short rib. Uh -huh. And then I had some of those long, I had- Flanken ribs, yeah. I had four or five flanken ribs. Okay. I had, I had four and then I ate two more because I was still hungry. Okay. And I was still hungry, but I decided I would have to stop eating <laughs> because I need to let myself fully digest. Right. I'm, I'm, I was okay. a little bit hungry. I wasn't that hungry. Okay. And I don't need, I don't feel like I want anything right now. Okay. I did have some neurological support vitamins. Okay. I had, uh, had some ginkgo. I had... Uh, I had uh, an Ayurvedic uh, blend. Mind care. Mind care. The Himalayan brand Mind Care that includes ashwagandha and some other. I will link to these things in the description of the video if any of you are interested. And that is for me. That's really good. I also took some some uh, astaxanthin and zeanthin for my eyes, which I always find to be beneficial. It just helps me because then then I don't wear glasses but if I don't do that I find that the tension of my eyes um, diminishes my visual uh, my eyesight those nutrients are also found in egg yolks and some of you who don't have you know you're it's not bothered a, by anything then you might find that you're getting enough eye support through egg yolks and stuff like that but he yolk, feels yolk. better i know he makes fun of me the way i say it but that's a conversation that's been going on for 24 years and here we are uh in any case i will also link those supplements if you feel like you need some more eye support yep so you can eat egg yolks as you listen to folk music and All right. Get it at Walgreens. Okay, so if you come home, you're gonna go to. Ju is this jujitsu? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so if you come home and if you're a little like munchy, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Okay. I'll probably just do more elements and and beef broth. You're also beef bro probably beef, beef broth. broth. Yeah. And ghee. Beef broth and ghee. Maybe that, yogurt. I don't know. I've been eating yogurt. Uh -huh. True. I've been having yogurt and dairy. Uh-huh. Um, Mostly I, yogurt, kefir, 
yogurt and kefir. And he's some half and half, but you've you've, you've reduced the half and half all, or heavy cream. All of that's reducing. Right Probably now. fermented dairy, as I understand it, is a more ancestrally appropriate way to eat dairy. We've talked about what it might look like if you took a break from it, but that's not right now. Um, but you know, if somebody wants to keep dairy in, I mean, I keep dairy in and I, I'm, I'm not really eating yogurt or anything like that, but those are when they look across all these ancient cultures and how they are still eating today when they're secluded, they're eating fermented milk, fermented yak milk. Uh, I'm sure it's, it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. There's it's isn't, aren't those, those people delicious. that make this liquor out of yak milk, something. Sure. Um, uh, they live in yurts. Right. Right, exactly. It's those people. So, um, the uh, in any case, fermented dairy friends. is less of a concern. I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Uh -huh. Okay, so so that's basically what you're eating right now, and you're on day. You're now on day eleven of being pretty clean. Cleaner, cleaner. You know, cleaner. Yeah. It's like progressively cleaner. Yeah. Because I kind of have. I've had to wean myself after the indulgence of the holidays. Right. And so you, uh, it was either Dr. Peterson or Chris Palmer, but in that conversation, they, they mentioned time frames. And you kept saying it to me. Yeah, 90 days. 90 days. That's what Dr. I said Barry 30, said. I said 30. Uh-huh. But I think 90 is the way to go. If you're going to really get full benefit of the autophagy uh -huh. and the mitophagy. Because I'm interested in two things right now. I'm interested in mitochondrial health uh -huh. and lymphatic health. Okay, so in the carnivore space and keto space, there's a lot of talk about autophagy and a lot of people know what that is, but what yeah. is mitophagy? It's the same thing except within the cell, we mm -hmm. have that little powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria, and the mitochondria is a very interesting organelle which I'll let Dr. Palmer talk about because I'm not the, you know, the expert. But, I mean, it's you read into it, you read what it does and all that stuff, and how they're finding that the mitochondria is not just about ATP, ADP, you know, mm -hmm. processing and the metabolism of the cell, but mm -hmm. how that metabolism of the cell affects genetic expression. Right. And now, now you're talking about epigenetic factors that used to be, you know, like witchcraft to people uh -huh. 10 years ago. Right. But right. that's like, well, that's we, what it, I mean, the, the, the mitochondria are responsible for the energy that you have in your body and in your life. Yeah. And how then it expresses it, the, its genetic uh, uh, information, whether it is activated in a way that supports life or not, it's. I'll leave it at that. So you teach yoga, and you have a lot of private clients, personal clients. Are you telling any of them that you're doing this? I've mentioned it. How do you say it to them? I say I'm doing an experiment. <laughs> and and then they say, "Ooh, what's the experiment?" No, they don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, not always. Do you just say, I'm doing a dietary experiment, I'll let you know? Or do you tell them? Well, sometimes, you know, it depends. Like, if I'm having a particularly rough day, uh -huh. I'll, I'll say, which just happens, you know, and you feel kind of crappy. Right. You know, and I can still work, and I can still help them, uh -huh. but to avoid discussion about maybe why I'm not like over the top gleeful with them, you know. It's because you're in a transition. It's like, it's, yeah, I'll say, yeah. look, I'm, I'm doing this experiment on myself and I'm changing my gut biome and, you know, I'm making these conscious choices to not eat food and to restrict the timing of when I eat and stuff like that. But you don't tell them you're doing carnivore? I, some people I do. Okay. But if they're not interested, I don't tell them. Right, sure. Not everybody wants to hear it. No. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting for those of you, like if you, if you put some feelers out with some of your people that 
were like, oh, that sounds interesting. And then if you like, hey, why don't you guys join me on a 30 day, 60 day or 90 day challenge? Do you wanna do it? Um, I don't know, I'm just planting that bug in your brain. Uh, no sane person would do that. No, no, but I mean, I'm but some kidding. of your I'm people, your I'm people, you have some pretty radical, interesting people who might yeah. say they're down for that. You know, they might be if they if they learned enough in advance. You know, I, I, I think you have to be willing to um, look for results where you haven't looked for them before. And if you're not willing yeah. to do that, then you're not willing to right. to um, commit to it. Well, because there's unexpected things. You and I watched Carrie's Homestead How video about the cereal. Um, and, and we it talked about... It didn't used to be that way. No, but, 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 but we, you and I talked Cheerios about... Cheerios used the, to be food. Uh, that you talked, well, there's a whole history of Kellogg's and we can go into that. But yeah. regardless, if, um, there, there's questions about that because yeah, that, it's, know, that's not I an know, ancient know, food. Know, that's know. highly processed. It's always been highly processed. I know. But I Carrie know. went carnivore and came off of, you guys have, if you guys watch his channel, you see that he has this basket of psychiatric meds he came off of. Mm -hmm. And he will show that on camera. I mean, he lost 100 pounds, that's great, but not everybody needs to lose weight. You don't need to lose weight. No. But, and you're not on meds, because you take care of yourself also. But um, but in terms of um, pr uh, taking care of, of brain inflammation, that can affect everybody. I, I'm, that's, the, that's, you know, I'm really, you know, because of my dad. Yeah. Um, I'm paying attention to his life experience at 89. Uh huh. And the difficulties that he's having. And they're not, from what I've seen, they're not necessary. Yeah. And if they're not necessary, I'm certainly not going to participate. Right. And so I'm, I'm hopeful but not confident that my dad will try some of these things. He enjoys it. So his dad's 88, going to be 89 in, like in a couple months. Weeks. Yeah. And um, when he comes here on Sundays, he comes here for Sunday dinner, we just eat meat. And he doesn't come. He enjoys it. He eats it all up. But my dad doesn't complain about Jack until he, you get him riled up. And does he like the food? Yes. But I'm sure he, he wishes he had mashed potatoes. But. Yes, he does, and he he has his he he's got eighty eight years and eleven months of habit. Well, and and your late mom was of of half Italian, right? You know, descent. And there's and so there's pasta, ravioli, pasta, <laughs> homemade, <laughs> you know? all of it. Yeah, that. uh huh. I mean, when we went to the cabin, there's. Petitza, if any of you know what that is. No, that's a, Slovenia. I know, but that's also from your mom's, uh, you know, other half of her heritage. Um, a pastry, like, a, anyway, you can look it up. And, and you know, blueberry muffins. And uh, yeah, and then Aunt pie. Christy would bring over pies. And, and, and then there's ice cream. You know, and all of and that stuff. And homemade cookies, you know, of course. Everything. Not just Toll yeah. House, you uh -huh, know, stuff. But right. Like. Mixing then, up the oatmeal and the brown sugar. Then what I call her cabinet of shame, which was her cabinet yeah. where she kept the chocolates and, she and knew, chips. She knew that sugar she, yeah. was metabolically rude for her cancer. Right. And she still had her but you know what? stash. I get it. And I've talked about it just myself when I do video here. When, you know, when you've been, first of all, when... Canon MC, married decades, all that stuff. There's still like stress, right? And sometimes, you like about? you feel like, um, you know what? I just need this little thing right now. I just need this little thing that's just in my control, and nobody can tell me not to eat it. And it's just my thing. It's my secret thing, private treat, and it's a thing I can have just to myself and to escape the stress of whatever something just threw at me. And and I have a lot of sympathy for that because this goes beyond knowing. I mean, I've cheated and I've done, um, you know, I had a carb or candy or pastry or whatever out of rebellion and out of just one little thing that I can do that nobody will know that I can control. And so when I think about your mom having that cabinet there, and she was not obese. 
Um, no. Not, no, she was lovely. Um, and, uh, but you know what? She had a cabinet with those things in it. And I, M &Ms, I, and I think it was her, like, this is one thing that's mine, you know? And she died of, of um, multiple, multiple myeloma. myeloma. And uh, ultimately, kidney failure. And and she knew. She, I mean, she knew what sugar does for that. But you know, there's there come. There's also comes a point in your life where you're like, you know, I can only do so much. And I have some sympathy for that. I hope for myself that I really get this under my belt before I'm faced with anything like that, where it's so dire. Um, but you know, those things could could be around the corner. Um, and I, I think a lot of you all probably <clears throat> sympathize. You can know and know and know and have every trick up your sleeve to avoid a craving and be aware of everything and all of the knowledge. But like Kelly Hogan talks about lizard brain, sometimes that takes over. That takes over. And that's probably, you know, what was going on for her. And I have sympathy with that. It's like you just, this other animal part of you just says, eat that, eat that, do that, eat it. It's like the food tells you to eat it, you know. So, um, but the, the, you got to not give up. I mean, even if uh, you, you, you fall uh, and, and cave to something, really, you got to like, sometimes in the next 15 bounce. minutes, you know, sometimes, yeah. you know, sometimes and you learn a, something. Sometimes it's a good bounce because say you indulge, uh -huh. if you, if you make a mistake, I always say make a big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and yeah. then... Right. There's clarity. Right. Yeah. You know, and then it's much easier to observe and make a decision with commitment. Right. You know, and this word decision, I like that word because it means to decide is to cut away. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And when, when you really decide... <laughs> you, That's a great way to think about it. You cut away everything yeah. else, uh -huh. and you're just there, and so things don't bother you. Mm -hmm. You can walk through the valley of the shadow of M&M's. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know if today I could walk through the valley of the shadow of M&M's, but that'd be great to think about it that way. Mm -hmm. And that word, decide... Uh, that's a great way to to be aware of the root of that word. And just be, so, th the one thing that I have learned about fasting, and I'm not not the greatest faster. There are people far better than I am about it. But years ago, I did like I did twelve and a half, thirteen days, just water, and a few little like, seeds. That was our dog's bone dropping on the ground. Yeah, like pumpkin seeds, like just a f handful, just to, and minerals to keep me going, you know. Uh, water and that, uh, maybe a couple of goji berries in there, but nothing, there was no meal. It was like specific time, have a little bit of sustenance, keep the system moving so it doesn't just collapse down on itself. But what I recognized after a while, it wasn't about being hungry. It was about the motivations. It was about my choices. It was about um, what I wanted to do, the habits that I had, and why I wanted to do them. It was about the motivations that became revealed to me because of fasting. And that's not always comfortable. And that's why there are spiritual connections with fasting and spiritual traditions across the globe uh, that use fasting to uh, recognize the truth of our motivations. And it's not about doing it in some kind of uh, transactional exchange, like I'm going to... Uh, be a better spiritual person because I'm doing this and I'm disciplined about it and I'm good. It's not that. It is about recognizing the truth of, of my motivations. Mm -hmm. And it's not always pleasant what those are or good. 
and uh, not, if I've decided, well, I've decided. Sometimes it fails, well, not whatever, but then with the mistake, then I also say, oh, okay, get back on track. I have this funny image of you decide something, so that means you cut this other thing away, yeah. but then sometimes you're like, wait a minute, give, give me that. <laughs> <laughs> and you try to mash it back Rationalize on. How wait, can maybe I can get well, this wait. back on there. You know what it is? <laughs> what it is is like that thing goes away and you're going along and something, not that, uh -huh. but something like that, Oh yeah, it's over here. Uh huh. Uh huh. And you know, oh, well, oh, you know what? Just that. And that's a big rationalization that people rational... do. Well, at least it's not that other thing. Exactly. Yeah. And so, I mean, <laughs> in, in any case, so it, it, the 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 action of fasting is really for me about recognizing the habits of my action and the desires that I have, the motivations that I have toward that action. And that if I can pause that, hmm. then it's then it's more truthful, more integrated. It is. It, I I feel more whole. It feels like it clears out my heart. If that wow. makes any sense. Yeah. It clears out my heart, mm -hmm. and then my desires and my actions go together and then my words are easier to go together with my actions mm -hmm. and then I feel more integrated and aligned and I have more energy and I feel less um, despite everything that's going on I don't feel um, that my state of mind is determined by external actions. Does that make any sense? Yes. Okay. That is a great place to leave it, I think. So we'll do this again in a little while. I don't know how much longer, a few, couple more weeks, few more weeks, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have this other conversation, we'll have this conversation again and talk about, you know, if he gave up any more of this type of food or or how, how it's been going, what's been going on with Maybe snoring, sense of smell. Involved. Oh yeah, if we can get KG Farrell involved that'd be great i'm taking him to samurai inti oh yeah that's gonna be that's, fun i'm taking <clears throat> him he'll feel tough so he's in he great shape the, he yeah. likes the punching bags oh, he's, he's likes, a pugilist he's an ex-fighter pilot yeah. but no there's no such thing as ex-fighter right. pilots and once a fighter pilot always a fighter pilot. yeah because nothing you know what after that adrenaline yeah what's after right, that exactly you know Okay, so we, maybe we'll have an update about his dad. So we'll see. Okay, that's it. I will put the link to that um, Jordan Peterson, Chris Palmer inter podcast interview also in the description of this. So look for that. All right, and, and check out. I have a lot of other links about stuff I use, stuff I use in my kitchen, products I use, all of that. Check all of that out. And in fact, those, those are affiliate links. And if you click on any of those, I get teeny, I get three pennies that I can use to buy more meat. <laughs> or yarn. A yarn. <laughs> you know my crochet problem. Yarn. Okay, bye.